Good morning, this is Dr. Babo. Today is day nine of our first Peter commentary study. Well, let's start with a prayer. Father, we thank you for this morning. Again, we ask for your favor, favor beyond measure, Lord, that we may be victorious today. As always, Lord God, we need your anointing and we need your power. We need your anointing to just flow through top of our head to bottom of our feet today, Lord God. Make us victorious and let us say revival today in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're continuing on with our First Peter chapter 1. I read from verse 6 through 9. I named it today's section as love, faith, and salvation. Read from uh, King James Version first. 1 Peter 1, 6, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Wow, reading of the scripture. I pray that you're blessed by that. Well, let's read that from Berean Study Bible. It will be more understandable <laughs> than King James. But uh, this is the word of the Lord. In this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a while, little while, you may have had to suffer grief in various trials, so that the proven character of your faith, more precious than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with inexpressible and glorious joy now that you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Wow. See, uh, Peter is really uh, writing this letter because he's fighting against his false prophets and false teachers, sort of like the prosperity gospel teachers who profit from sharing the gospel. You know, they talk about driving fancy car, but they're the only one who's driving it kind of, uh, you know, shallow <laughs> Christianity. Well, Peter's against that. And so there's no uh, exception. There was false teachers then. There are false teachers now. And they will continue to be, if, if Lord tarries, they will be profiteers of the religion. But he talks about salvation. And he says, well, the trial of your faith, yeah, it's genuine to see if your faith is authentic, genuine, and trustworthy. And your faith that you have confidence in whom? So yesterday I talked about you must have true confidence, not in what, but whom. But today he is continuing on. Peter keep on talking about uh, the returning of Jesus. So yesterday he talked about the resurrection of Jesus. Now he's talking about the returning of Jesus because some false teachers are saying Jesus is not returning back. And he's saying, no, he is uh, for sure. And so he's now talking about that. Well, there's a trial of faith. He's saying that, well, your, your faith is being tried, you know, and um, I think the greatest trial of faith now, uh, I think God really, especially as I'm recording this, this is September, 2020, uh, when we when we are experiencing the legitimate pandemic of our generation, March 10th this year, 2020, WHO declared COVID-19 as pandemic, and we're still going through that. And this through this trial, and I believe that God was fine-tuning our faith. Our faith, whom do we trust? Right and. I think that uh, the thing that we really need to be uh, be careful is that the true our sin of this generation is self reliance. We felt that we could do this. We don't really need God. The science could save us, and 
And just referring to Martin Heidegger, who later wrote a book after he died, it was published called Only God Can Save Us. Right? So um, this whole self-reliance is, is taking a heavy toll, you know, on uh, humanity right now. No government can save, <laughs> no power can save, no leader can save us. Only God can save us. Only the grace of God, the mercy of God. So I've been praying and fasting and praying uh, for mercy of God to manifest in the world. And so he's talking about that. Yeah, you suffer, you're trying of your faith. Well, you better come out. If the trial of faith is, is a fire, then as long as your gold and it's going to burn up those draws and it's going to burn up those things that doesn't belong to you and and there are plenty right so and then he says something very interesting he says jesus whom you have not seen you love see peter is just so amazed um, and he's actually uh, when you look in the historical perspective he's addressing to a lot of churches that he did not plan because he was an apostle sent to Jews. But Apostle Paul went around planting churches and he's now addressing to the people that Apostle Paul planted saying that, man, how do you love Jesus whom you haven't even seen? See, for him, it's the opposite. He has seen him, he touched him, went to bathroom with him for three years and he knows Jesus is humanity. And yet, he receives him as deity. And that's why he worshiped God. He worshiped Jesus as God. Not as rabbi. Not as good teacher. Right? Uh, calls him Lord. And then recognize him as God. Right? God who came to die on the cross for us. And that he overcome death by resurrecting. And this God is going to come back. He's coming back. So, He's, he's in that line of thought. He says, you know, guys, I'm so amazed at you guys for loving Jesus, whom you have not even seen, right? And he says, you are more blessed than us because you have not seen him and you loved him. So he reminds of what uh, Thomas, Jesus said uh, to Thomas in John 20, 29. Jesus said unto Thomas, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed, blessed are they that not seen, and yet have believed. Jesus is talking about us, man. <laughs> we are more blessed than Thomas and apostles because apostles have met and seen and touched Jesus. But we haven't, and yet we believe. Wow. Whew. That's good, right? Should be good, right? And so we must have this faith, this genuine faith, Faith that says, where do you put trust in? What is it trustworthy? Is your faith trustworthy? Right? And so, um, when we say, though we see him not, you do not see, right? But you believe. Once again, you believe is in present, participle, active. In the Greek for you believe is present, participle, active. Which means, it's not something you believe yesterday. It's not something you're going to believe tomorrow. You believe now, but you believe, you believe, you believe. You actively engage in believing, right? So, uh, yesterday we talked about you hope in present participle active. You hope now. <laughs> now, Paul, uh, Peter is saying you believe now. And when you do that, present participle active, then you shall be saved evidence of things and you know so hebrew 11 1 says now faith is substance of things hoped for evidence of things not seen might have been perhaps was drawn to study of peter's writing and he's saying that wow well, this this is this is our faith and that's how we are saved praise the lord it seems that okay and then i write in page 29 25. It seems that the main objective of both epistles is to keep the followers of Christ, especially Jews, from slipping back from internal personal relationship to external traditional religion. Wow. 
as he was warned in Hebrew 3.12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Right? Apostle Paul also challenged us to walk by faith, not by sight. Right? I've met enough Christians, so-called Christians, who maybe had encountered Jesus or you know, maybe was passionate about following Jesus once, one point in their lives. But, you know, as they age, they just become very religious. And they just hmm, become religious and they have absolutely no relationship with Christ. And, you know, they say these things that is kind of nonsensical. You know, have nothing to do with relationship with Christ. And becomes rules and regulations and they bind themselves with this kind of religious life and they all say all this stuff but they don't have life. Why is that, right? So Peter is actually warning against that, saying that, no, you receive end of your faith, the salvation of your souls by having, believing in present participle active. You believe now. You actively engage in faith now, right? So the reflection point I ask you, are you saved? Are you receiving salvation now and will later because of faith? Meditate on this and write your own response. So and you're supposed to write your own response. You know, no, I, I don't know. Uh, some people said that I believe in eternal security. <laughs> he said, well, what do you mean by that? He said, well, my pastor taught me that once saved, you're always saved. So you have faith in eternal security or do you have faith in Jesus Christ? There's a difference. You could have faith about a doctrine, but that may not save you because you must have living faith, active pres participle, right? Present active participle faith that you believe now on the Lord Jesus Christ himself, that will save you. Your faith in eternal security is not going to save you. Right? Think about that. Don't believe in a doctrine when doctrine itself is not life. It's not God. You could only have faith in triune God. God the Father, Jesus the Son, and Holy Spirit, who is God, who is actively working with you, who so empower you today that you could live a victorious life today. Not memorization of the scripture. You know, the biblicists will love to say that, I believe in Bible. What do you mean? Bible is just love letter that talks about Jesus, who has God, that you need to worship through the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, the biblicists will love to try to put Bible as God. But don't, don't become that. Let the word of God, like today, this is what we need to do today. So read that once more, several times. In this you greatly rejoice. You know, read Berean Bible because it's a little more easier to understand. And then there are a lot of versions. Try to read at least 20 different versions of Bible in your lifetime. Right? And, and, and then let God speak to you. And meditate on it. Walk with it. You know, take a walk, long walk. You know, uh, Try to walk. This is America, so I, there's a place to walk here. <laughs> I'm going to try to walk hour a day. Meditate on words and maybe talk to people, you know, and as I meditate. And, and whatever that meditation comes, maybe I could share. That would be great exercise, you know. And, and really make Jesus and the Word of God real in your life today. Amen? So, Father, I ask Father, that you speak to us through love, faith, and salvation through 1 Peter 1, 6 through 9. Empower them, anoint them today. They cannot on their own. They are weak. But Holy Spirit, empower them. Let them speak with authority. Let them have living faith that when they believe, they will not believe in doctrine, but they will believe in living God. And they will be victorious today, Lord, because you empower them. Let them break out into brand new tongue today. Let them break out into new fresh anointing, gifting today. Father, I pray that you heal people through them today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let's be victorious. Go with God. Amen? Amen. Let's do this.